Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is a case of Duval Beauville versus Beauville. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Ms. Beauville, two years ago, you and your mother were shocked when the man you always believed is your dad told you he is not your biological father. You tried to bring the defendant to paternity court six months ago, but say he backed out of his appearance. Now that he is here today, you state the DNA results will finally prove your case. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Beauville, you claim for more than 20 years you held on to a secret and had no choice but to confess your belief that Ms. Beauville's father is another man. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Beauville, tell me what happened two years ago. Two years ago, I received a phone call from another brother of mine stating that my dad had doubts that if he was my father or not due to activities that happened before I was born. That was during Thanksgiving on a holiday weekend. And Can then... you be more specific? <clears throat> you say activities. What kind of activities? He felt like my mom was unfaithful and was doing things that wasn't right within the relationship. Understood. So now, um, when I got the phone call, I um, kind of brushed it off and then my brother James was on the phone with my dad and that's when I heard him out of his own mouth say that he wanted to have a DNA test because he needed his own closure just to know if I was his daughter or not. And how old were you when this conversation happened? 25. So, so your whole life, until you were 25 years old, you think this man is your father? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Duval. What in the world are you thinking when your daughter gets this call? I was in shock. I had no clue that he ever doubted that Carrie was his daughter. Carrie was devastated. Well, I, I, mean, I she expect was, so. My daughter broke down, and this is my only daughter. Mr. Beauville? Yes, You Your decided Honor. to make this call on Thanksgiving weekend, sir? I asked one of my sons for Carrie's number because I wanted to share something with him. When I told my son how I felt about this situation that we're here today for, my son brought the information to Carrie. What, were, only, what, only... what got you to this point? What led you to this point where okay. you said, this is, I have to talk about this? Okay, for, um, well, when I first met Regina, I, I, I lived in Boston. Regina lived in Springfield. And when I relocated from Boston to Springfield, the first two weeks I got there, people I didn't even know was telling me, yo, this guy's talking about that's his woman. And so I goes to Regina and I ask her, Regina, what this guy talking about? I only been in this town for two weeks. This went on for like 10 years. See what I'm saying? 10 years? 10 years. And at the same time, I even, I even addressed it to Regina. Why does he keep telling that? Even her brothers had to go to him and, and check him on that. Am I right What's going on no. here, Ms. Duval? First of all, there is, there is no truth to none of this. What let's, he just said. Yes, let's start there. Second of all, Mr. Beauville, if you doubted me, if you did not trust me, why did you stay? If you felt like that all those years, you should have left. So all of these years, Mr. Beauville, you believe that this other man who's married to a family member could be... Carrie's biological father? Yes, Your Honor. What convinced me was four years ago, I went to North Carolina, and I finally met some of Carrie's cousins. And the person that I'm talking to, one of her cousins, is his granddaughter. Your Honor, if I had a picture and showed it to you right now of her cousin, you would believe yes. that would be Carrie. If I showed you her picture, you would believe that was Carrie. And that's when I said, you know, I knew I was right. I knew I was right. You it, saw a picture of this man's granddaughter. Granddaughter. And it looks exactly like... I said, that's my... And, I, and I, yeah, tears came out of my eyes. And that's when I said, I knew I was right. I knew I was right. Uh, if you look at anybody in my family, <sighs> from my first cousins down to my third cousins, we all have the same trait. One, we're all blind. We all wear glasses. Two, we all, we all smile exactly the same. And... The older I get, the more I start looking like my other cousin. The older she get, another cousin starts looking like me. It's in our genes. We all look alike. So, Mr. Beauville, all of these years, you have these doubts, 
I had you But stop. you never share them. The things that went on before Carrie was born, the relationship they had, because her and this person I'm talking about, they did, I mean, after everybody was telling me to keep my eyes on them, watching them, now I'm, wa I'm, I'm watching them too. They used to disappear all the time. Oh, he's my wish partner. He was my best friend before you came to pick Your Honor, up. first of all, we are a very close-knit family. The grandchildren are 70-plus deep of my mother's grands and great-grands, and all of them look alike. But the one thing that I did not want to happen here is that my family values would be tarnished with the babbling and the things that he are saying that has no substance to them. So let me ask you this. During the window of time in which yeah. Carrie was conceived, the question really becomes, were you intimate with anyone else during that time? No, ma'am. Where there could be another potential father for this beautiful young no, woman. No, ma'am. At the end of the day, in paternity court, that's the question we have to answer. Now, what is interesting is in the court papers, I found her birth certificate. Now, on her birth certificate, there is no father listed. I never found none of my kids, none of my names on my, none of my kids' birth certificate. You didn't let them sign the birth certificate, Mr. Duvall? Nope. Ma'am, nope. no, that's not the case. Nope. Mr. Beauville never took the time to go there and sign those birth certificates. I told him time and time again, you are a grown man. Go to that hospital, to the wherever, and sign your children's birth certificates. I cannot sign them for you. Like I said, we all made mistakes. When we, at the time, before Carrie was born, we both made mistakes. See what I'm saying? Yes. And I'm not holding no grudge <laughs> against her, but them 10 years of living in Springfield, people that I didn't know coming up to me, see what I'm saying? Even, even when we moved to South Carolina, the same person was so infatuated with Regina. Now, she's my wife now. Anything that I did with my kids, he got mad. You are saying that this gentleman interfered in your relationship, in your parenting, so much that you felt like Ms. Duval and this person, they were having a relationship. Yes. And this was all occurring during the window of time in which Carrie was conceived and born. This yes. was going on all of that time. Yes, Your Honor. Did he ever say anything to you specifically about actually being Carrie's father? Yes, he did. When what I did moved he to say? South Carolina, he gonna say, that's my baby. That's my baby. See what I'm saying? About Carrie. You see, I would say, you know how, yeah, about Carrie. That's my baby. That's my that baby. That is a lie wow. straight from hell. Your Honor. That's a lie, you know straight what? from here. So let me ask you this, and we are in court and I need your answer to be truthful. Why would they start this type of rumor? Why? Your Especially Honor. a person in the family. What would, what would be the motive? The motive to me, if he was saying any of that, it was the motive was he was just a liar too. Were you ever intimate with this other man? No. For the hundredth time, no. I wouldn't even think about being in nothing with this man. When Carrie was born, even though I had these doubts, I still loved her and I treated her like she was mine. How? How uh, can you say, how? Because how you can know you say that in court? Of, you have never, you have never been a father. Because you know you what? have you know never what? been you know a what? father. You Stop know lying you like you the have. The that I gave you. You have the never. Pictures. Don't talk over you her, have Mr. Never. Never. All right, all right. You can't Stop. Graduation, you ain't come to mind. You know what? And I apologize for no, that because you know, no, I could not. You've never been a you father. Know you had Your one Honor. birthday party for me. You gave me, but you sent boxes of clothes, giving me things as not being a father. I suffered because I've never. And you know what? You did suffer. You. It's not. You know what's it's not, not fair, Carrie? I, I, I owe you an apology, me. Carrie. You know I owe you an apology. I suffer. My brothers are suffering. Yeah, yeah, you suffered. You did, I, and I owe you an apology. And you yes, know you what? You owe me an apology, Miss Bo. Oh, Mr. Beauville. Yes, Your Honor. I'm gonna ask you one last time to be so... I'm so sick of hearing your mouth. All right, I won't say, I won't I, say I mean, another word, Your Honor. I mean, just the sound of your voice... I won't say another word, Your Honor. ...in my ear right now. While this young word. girl is trying to express to you what your absence, what your dysfunction, what your mistakes have cost her. Yes, you right, Your Honor. Go ahead, Miss Beauville. You say you and your brothers have suffered. 
We all have suffered. I have let people hurt me because of you and not having the love of a father. And if you have a father, you will never understand what not having a father does to you. Especially being a black woman. And I love God with all that, my that, that heart, was, but that it was, was your mother them. and your grandmother. It was father. not them. You they were not let me come see Mr. You. Beauville, you don't make grown. me come off this bitch. You are grown. And my mother has never, even when we tried to down talk you, she used to say, no, that's still your father. My grandmother, my grandmother never, she brought us to Massachusetts and sent us to your mother to visit you. My mother did that. My mother. How? My grandmother dropped, bought us on a bus from South Carolina no, to didn't. Massachusetts. No, my mother that did. That picture that I sent here with me and his other daughter and my other two brothers sitting on the couch was when we went to Boston. That was the first time i have been back to Boston since I was born that I can remember. And when you went back, did he make an attempt to get to know you, to see you? We was, he was in jail, so that was the only thing I got to see you him. Know, I know. went a couple of years ago. My aunt that lives in Massachusetts brought me there for Christmas. And I went and stayed with my sister. And I went and visited him, and I spent the day with him. And that was it. But the entire time we, we together, all he can talk about is the past of him and my mother. That has absolutely nothing to do, do with me. I'm 25. I'm not a child. I know what's going on. I'm very intelligent. I have a brain. I don't, I don't give two flying bananas about what they done before me. He talking about 10 years, but I don't care. It has nothing to do with me. Yes. I'm the child here. And you have to be able and you to get over that because it's not, I shouldn't be doing this right now. I shouldn't be having to do this with you. You are correct. She wants you to are that. correct. And you are a smart young woman. And I think you can see now, even for me, why I am getting so agitated. Because everybody's talking in circles. Everybody got stories. And I still don't have a great description as to what the circumstances were surrounding your conception. That's really all I'm here to get to. There because is that really is the end-all, be-all of this particular saga. Mm-hmm. This, this particular moment in time is about that, to get the answer you need. Now, I want to hear your story. And part of that is your witness. And you brought someone with you. I would like you to stand, sir, please. And state your name for the court. James Bovill the third. Please step to the podium, Mr. Bovill. I'd like to hear from you. And so, Mr. Bovill is your father. Yes, my father. You're her brother. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you came to court to testify today as to... Me and my dad have a close relationship, so, like, he had told me this, like, four years ago, a few years ago when he come down south, but, you know, I had kind of, like, I had brushed it off, you know, because it was really, like, I didn't really find it, like, necessary to interrupt my sister with it, so I didn't tell her. So he mentioned it. it to you, but you decided not to say anything to your sister at the time. Yeah, I, I didn't feel like the time was right and the place was right to... What did he say to you in particular? I mean, when he seen that family member, he was like, don't she look just like Carrie? This could be such and such baby. So, only thing I can go by is what he believed and how he feel. I can't go off or, like, the only thing I could do is just step in the gateway and be there for it, which is my sister. Did he say he was not Carrie's father or did he say he wasn't sure? He said he wasn't sure. Okay. Thank you for your testimony. Jerome, I'm ready for the results. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Duval, Beauville versus Beauville, when it comes to 25-year-old Carrie Beauville, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Beauville, you are the father. I knew he was my father, but now that he knows and he has no more reason to doubt me as his daughter, 
I really just want to tell him that I'm so sorry that you missed out. And I'm so sorry that you went through all that you had to go through, Dad. Because I, I know it was a bad time in both of you all's lives. And I just want to say that I forgive you. <laughs> I forgive you for everything. <laughs> In this moment, it is very valuable to just say, I know I hurt you, but this is why I came today, because I didn't want to miss another minute. And Carrie, you're right, he missed out, and I think he knows he did. And hopefully today, this truth can be the start of a new beginning for you all. We have counseling and resources for you. I wish you all the very best of luck. Court is adjourned. <laughs>